Hello and welcome to my documentary on the RNLI's recruitment documentation and the main physical and technological resources the RNLI has. The RNLI stands for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution and is the largest non-profit charity that runs in the United Kingdom. It consists of volunteers who dedicate their own spare time to save lives at sea. To volunteer for the organisation there is a certain recruitment documentation that has to be met. There is currently around 7,700 volunteers already and more joining every week. The RNLI states that potential volunteers need to know that being part of a life group crew is a major commitment which could involve risking your own life, so volunteers must be brave and ready for anything. This shows that it's a very special, unique role and is not for everyone. As well as this, Increasingly new equipment and faster boats means that regular training also accounts for much of the volunteers' spare time. There is a list of requirements that can be found on the RNLI website for becoming a volunteer. These are some. You must be over 17, under 55, you must be physically fit, you must live or work close to a lifeboat station, you must pass a probation period that usually lasts for up to a year. You must be a team player, enjoy physical hard work and obey orders when necessary. In addition to the crew, there is another three roles needed to run a lifeboat station effectively. There is the lifeboat operations manager who is in charge of authorising launches and day-to-day -day station management. The lifeboat press officer produces press releases and promotes the station's activity in local and regional media. And the Lifeboat Medical Advisor performs the cruise medicals and gives first aid and scenario training. To volunteer you can go onto the RNLI volunteering website or ask at your local station. You can see that the RNLI is a very successful charity with all the advanced resources they have. When focusing on physical resources you can see that all the lifeboat crew members have helmets, high visibility jumpsuits, life jackets and boots. These ensure they are easy to spot as well as ensuring they have maximum protection for themselves. There are over 350 lifeboats in the RNLI life fleet based at stations all over the country. They are divided into two categories, all weather boats and inshore lifeboats. All weather lifeboats are capable of high speed and can be operated safely in all weather conditions, whereas inshore lifeboats usually operate closer to the shore in shallower water and near cliffs. As well as this, the RNLI has a hovercraft and vehicles that are used to reach and transport the boat, such as jeeps, cars and tractors. Lastly, the RNLI owns a college that is full of state-of-the-art training facilities that volunteers are sent to to do their training. It is also used for events, gatherings, as well as general accommodation. All earnings and profits made by the college is donated to the charity and is one of the most reliable ways the organisation is funded. When looking at technological resources, you can see that the company has basic technological advances such as computers and software, as well as much more expensive advanced technology such as navigational and communicational systems they have on their boats. These help efficiency by ensuring they have clear communication and very good tracking and navigation. Finally, the standout resource that they have is SIMS, which stands for System Information Management. It's an electronic integrated bridge system that allows the crew to operate and control the boat from their seats. This includes direction finding, radar and charting, radio communications and CCTV.